So what's this? It's obviously good. It has HP on it. Uh, HP goodness. Um, so this is what's called a Hewlett Packard 5086-7283 limiter. This particular limiter is good from DC to 1.8 gigahertz. There is an input port and an output port and it says max input 10 watts. Okay, so this thing can handle 10 watts. So whatever it is, it's good up to 10 watts. Now, what is it? Um, so let me, uh, let me draw a picture. I'll show you some data sheets later that are nicer than this, uh, but I want to get the measurements out of the way first and then I'll dig up the, uh, I'll dig up the data sheets. Where's my pen? So if we draw a graph of uh, power in and power out. Okay, so power in, power out. So uh, if you had nothing in the circuit, you'd get a line like this, okay? So for every amount of power that you increase, you get a power on the output as well. If you have an attenuator, then power in versus power out will follow a straight line but it'll be lower down, right? So power in, let's say you have a, a 6, 6 dB attenuator, then you're gonna attenuate the signal um, 6 dB, and your power in, the power out will be 6 dB lower than the power in. So you'll follow a straight line, but it'll be a lower slope, okay? So this thing is sort of a non-linear attenuator, okay? For a particular part of the way, it follows this line just fine. And then as you get higher in power, it starts to fall off like this, all right? And where it starts to fall off and how far it falls off is uh, parameters of the device. Uh, this particular device, um, the place where it stays linear, anything below about uh, zero dBm, it looks just like a wire, okay? It's just, it's gonna send the signals through just fine below zero, zero dBm, all right? and then anything above zero dBm, it's gonna to start to roll it off. And it'll roll it off to a maximum of about 20 dBm. Okay, so, um, and this would go up to 10 watts. I'm, I know I'm mixing units here, dBm's and watts, okay? So, uh, but this is how it's specified. So this is one milliwatt, okay? Men, one milliwatt, and this is 100 milliwatts, right? And I guess we can write that down. So up to one uh, milliwatt, I think it's two L's, milli, milliwatt to 100 milliwatts. Okay, so 10 watts in gives you about 100 milliwatts out. Um, and so let's see if that's true. Um, but uh, we'll make, like I said, we'll make the measurements, but uh, why would you want one of these things? Well, you want it to protect things. If it gets too big, you want to protect it. Well, you know, we talked a lot about the tiny SA and trying to protect the tiny SA, making sure that you don't have too much power in there. And I showed little devices like this uh, RF snitch that says whether you have too much power or not enough power and stuff like that. And I've taught about using attenuators, you know, make sure you use an attenuator so you, you don't go above zero dBm on your, uh, on your, uh, spectrum analyzer and stuff, you know. And so this is kind of a nice device. If you put this in there, it kind of, it kind of is self-limiting and makes sure that, the, that nothing gets above 20 dBm. Um, so let's take a look at a particular product that it's used in. And you've seen this before. Let me change the camera here a bit. All right, so I did a whole bunch of uh, videos on this uh, Hewlett Packard 8558B. Uh, spectrum analyzer, and it's good from uh, 0.1 to 1500 megahertz, okay, 1.5 gigahertz, and it has an input, and the input is marked. The inputs are always marked. They always have these yellow stickers on them say, danger, danger. This one says um, no more than 50 volts DC and no more than 30 dBm, one watt. Okay, 30 dBm is one watt. It says do not put more than one watt into this thing. So how does this thing handle that much power? Well, if we look underneath it, and we look at the back, yeah, that's better. I had to get light coming on it so we can see things. So this is the input here. I have an adapter on here right now. This is a, uh, 
end connector to BNC adapter. So the, 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 this is the input port for the, uh, for the spec metalizer and it comes in here and it goes along here and it goes into this thing down there. And that thing down there is an attenuator. And as you turn the knobs in the front, it steps that attenuator. The output of that attenuator comes off, comes out on this little thing here, right? So this is the input to the attenuator. This is the output, of the attenuator, and then it goes into this thing. Well, that looks familiar. That's an, that's an, that's a limiter. And so inside this, um, box, uh, are two things to protect the uh, to protect the instrument. One is a DC blocking uh, capacitor, and that's up in the front here. Um, so it blocks the DC. So uh, this says it can block it up to 50, 50 volts, which is very healthy. But it says uh, no more than 50 volts DC offset, and that's due to the capacitively coupled. And then uh, it goes into this limiter. Now this limiter is a uh, also a zero to 1.8 gigahertz limiter. Uh, the part number is a bit different. It's just one digit off, so I don't know what the difference is with this limiter and the one that I bought. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's a, a use case. They put it inside the spectrum analyzer to save the spectrum analyzer, just in case you accidentally put stuff in here. A lot of times these limiters also can handle peak powers. So this might be able to handle something like a 100 watt peak pulse but not DC. They're rated at DC. I think they're also rated at peak pulse if you buy the right limiter. I'm not sure if this one is, is you know, spec that way, but some of them are spec. Even though they're tiny little things, they'll take a 100 watt peak, uh, but uh, a 10 watt, a 10 watt, um, 10 watt DC. Okay, so there we go. Limiter in a spectrum analyzer. So let's go measure it and see if it does what it says it's supposed to do. All right, so I'm using my uh, radio test set analyzer here, and I'm going to be connecting up a uh, up a radio, and we will transmit, and uh, we will see what what there is to see. Let's see here. Let's change the units here, and I'm going to transmit, and it says we have 4.38 watts, and if we change the units to dBm, that's actually 36.4. DBM, okay, plus 36 DBM. All right, so I'm gonna take the coax off of this thing and we will insert the uh, limiter. All right, so I put the, uh, I've put the limiter in series with the, uh, with the unit and we will transmit again. Now remember the limiter's good to 10 watts. We only have four watts of power, so everything should be fine. And now I'm going to push the button and it says we get 11 dBm. Instead of plus 36 dBm, we're getting 11 dBm or 0 0.01 watts. Okay, so 13 milliwatts, right? So we've gone from four watts to 13 milliwatts. So uh, it's a very nice way to protect your, uh, to protect your instrument. And at low, uh, low signal levels, it's like it's not there. So anything below zero dBm, this thing would be operating just as usual. All right, so how does a, a, a limiter work? Uh, here's a diagram. This is uh, supposedly a schematic diagram of the Agilent limiter and the input and the output. And so it's just basically a diode or two. It can be one, two, three, it can be multiple diodes. Um, but basically you can imagine that the uh, forward voltage, you know, if you, your signal has some voltage associated with it, if it's big enough, then it starts to conduct through this diode and it'll start to clamp it. So it's just a, just a clamping diode. And if it's, you know, smaller than that, the diode doesn't do anything. So that's basically how they work. Um, this, uh, this one has two diodes. <clears throat> Some of them have three diodes, like a, a coarse, medium, and fine, <laughs> kind of a strange thing. And uh, usually they have matching inductors in them as well. There's some capacitance associated with these things. And there's a matching inductor to make sure it's all 50 ohms and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's how they work. And they do still, uh, they still do build these things, a lot of them. So here's the latest uh, Keysight ones, uh, Keysight uh, parameters, up to 50 gigahertz, yo. And applications. Uh, so here, here you're testing an amplifier. You put a limiter in there just in case the amplifier goes crazy on you. 
Uh, let's see. Spectrum analyzer and antenna. Wow. They're even worried about even about too much signal coming in from an antenna. That's unusual. Uh, look at some specifications here. Uh, insertion loss about 2 dB. Uh, return loss about 15 dB. Impedance. Uh, different wattages. Here's a 1 watt, 6 watt, 1 watt, 4 watt. Ours is a 10 watt. Better. Minimum leakage. So uh, maximum leakage. So this is the total amount that could come out at the rated power, right? So if you're putting in six watts, you might have uh, 27 dBm coming out, which is almost a watt. Uh, so anyway, yeah, anyway, uh, let's see if we can find some graphs. Yeah, here we go. So I, I drew that graph. Here's my, here's my crude graph. Remember that one? Uh, here's, here's, a, here's a good graph. Um, here's, here are two different ones. Um, output power versus input power, right? So as you go up here to right around, right around 21 dBm, plus 21 dBm, it's still linear. And then up here at 31 dBm, it's rolled off. So there's different, there's different cutoffs, different, uh, different sections and stuff. Uh, this one's cutting off a little, a little lower around six, uh, six dBm. Um, then you, there's insertion loss and SWR and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, so limiters. Um, I got the one that I bought for around $10. Uh, you have to shop around. I think new ones are hundreds of dollars, <laughs> but, uh, the used market, there seems to be quite a few limiters on the used market. They generally run around $20 or something like that. So shop around, see if you can get a good deal.